Climate engineering, geoengineering, solar radiation management programs are an absolutely undeniable reality. The ongoing illegal climate intervention operations are decimating the biosphere. This includes further fueling catastrophic forest fires all over the globe. Those who ignore or deny what they can see with their own eyes, the profoundly altered aerosol sprayed skies, grid pattern skies on some days, with nothing on other days, are turning two blind eyes to the immense and ongoing climate engineering threat. Jet aircraft spray dispersions are often seen being turned on and off, which countless film captures prove is occurring in skies all over the world. We're not seeing condensation trails. Jet engines are not being turned on and off. We're seeing intentionally sprayed aerosol dispersions that are a primary aspect of geoengineering and solar radiation management. If jet aircraft are being used, in fact, for geoengineering and solar radiation management aerosol spraying operations, they must have nozzles, and indeed, they do. In addition to military tankers, commercial aircraft are being utilized in the ongoing geoengineering operations, though commercial carrier personnel do not appear to be in any way involved. Why aren't the climate scientists, like those in the National Weather Service and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administrations, speaking out? In addition to having no First Amendment protection, there is now an illegal federal gag order on all National Weather Service and all NOAA employees. Climate engineering programs are nothing short of weather warfare on innocent... This is scheduled weather for the U.S. winter. And I say scheduled, again, because we have Lockheed Martin doing the weather, private defense contractor and geoengineering participant, Lockheed Martin, doing the weather modeling for the FAA. We have Raytheon, a private defense contractor, up to their neck in weather modification, doing the weather model modeling for National Weather Service and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. You have the foxes running the hen house. So what's the schedule weather for this winter? Right now, it appears that what is planned is a cooler than normal southern U.S. in spite of far above normal temperatures completely surrounding this region. From the northern tier, a band across the northern U.S., predicted to be far above normal temperatures, far above normal ocean temperatures. The west is supposed to be, or scheduled to be far above normal. The Atlantic Ocean is above normal. How do you have a cold zone in the middle? Because that's where much of the El Nino moisture will be steered, diverted, and ice nucleated. We'll probably see a lot of ice storms this winter. Why is there an ice storm every time we have a quote-unquote winter storm? As we saw last winter, we had the paid meteorologist uh, disinformation actors, which is what they are in the Weather Channel, and sources like that, all of those agencies, again, owned by the corporate power structure, Bain Capital, Rothschilds, and so on, Monsanto, another one. We have them explaining to us why there's a warm side and a cold side to a winter storm. Since when is there a warm side and a cold side to a winter storm? Since geoengineering entered the picture. They need the moisture to chemically ice nucleate, it's part of the process. So we see now typically thunderstorms and warm temperatures on one side of a, a quote winter storm. Then we'll have an ice band in the middle, ice storm. And then we'll have the winter storm side, the cold side, as the chemical ice nucleation process takes hold. These are unprecedented conditions. And now they're the norm. Geoengineering is also destroying the ozone layer. And this is not conjecture, it's not theory, it's not speculation. Rather, it's verifiable fact. Though mainstream sources are still not acknowledging the climate engineering reality, the catastrophic truth can't be hidden much longer. How many mainstream media sources covered the severe ozone depletion story? Ozone depletion is also occurring all over the globe. Though this depletion is most profound over the polar regions, the impacts are, as already stated, global and getting worse by the day. The now extreme UV radiation is literally frying and killing trees. The damage is most visible where there is the most exposure to the sun. Different species have various levels of resistance to the rapidly increasing UV radiation levels, which includes UVC, the last band of UV radiation before x-ray. But the signs of the UV radiation damage are everywhere and easy to see for anyone that takes the time to notice. 
rapidly increasing lightning is yet another firestorm factor that's directly connected to the climate engineering operations. The atmospheric saturation of electrically conductive materials greatly increases the static charge of the atmosphere and thus creates an easier pathway for cloud-to-ground lightning strikes. Though mainstream sources continue to blame increased lightning on planetary warming, the warming itself is not the primary causal factor for the lightning increase. Geoengineering is. The heavy metal particulate fallout from climate engineering operations is coating forests, homes, rooftops, and everything in between. One of the primary elements of this fallout is aluminum. Lab tests from around the globe prove this. Aluminum particulates, or dust, are an incendiary. What does this add up to? Climate engineering fallout is covering the forest foliage and everything else with an incendiary or flammable layer of extremely fine particulate dust. Radio frequency microwave transmissions are another aspect of the climate engineering assault that's fueling forest fires. These transmissions can and are heating the atmosphere and creating high pressure zones and stationary heat domes that accompany these high pressure domes. These transmissions are responsible for the creation of what has been termed the ridiculously resilient ridge that has consistently plagued the U.S. West Coast for nearly a decade.